Okay, so Lauren, uh, just talking about your name, right? F- first things first, Josh Sasfi, right? <laughs> yes. Believe, believe in Louis, right? Is That's it, um, right. He's got to fix the shirt, though. It's got to get the Tokyo uh, 2021 thing on there, right? <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> right? have it. Um, if you've seen their hashtag, it's still got the 2020, and then they just wrote O-N-E after it. It's actually pretty slick. But we got to get you a new shirt. Yeah. I'll get on Josh about that. But I've never talked to anybody. Um, while I've never interviewed someone whilst wearing their shirt. So <laughs> first for me, all right? I love it. It's awesome. Um, but I, I think you should stick with this. I like this. <laughs> I have blue ones right now. Do you? Yeah, and they actually have my uh, my logo. It's the LL with little, um, like, the laurel leaves around it. Okay. Yeah, I'm into yeah. this one. I'm into this one because I got it last year at the Iron Sharpens Iron Camp. That's actually where I met you. Yes. And, um, well, it's crazy because I work with Josh Sasfi. You work with Josh Sasfi. And then meeting you at the camp, it was, like, awesome. And then I remember you and Coach McDonald were working out, scrapping. <laughs> actually pretty cool to watch. Um, but um, how's everything going with you right now? Where are you right now? Everything's great. I'm just – I'm at home. <laughs> just Where'd hanging you- out. I'm in Colorado Springs. Okay. What part of Colorado Springs do you live in? Uh, I just moved literally yesterday. So, <laughs> I don't know. The part by the mountains. <laughs> By okay. Cheyenne Mountain. You live by Cheyenne Mountain. Okay. Um, do you live in that neighborhood? There's a really nice neighborhood up, the, like the the foothill of the mountain. That's a you know what I I'm wish. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you're talking by the golf course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I went out there in like 2014. Brian Keck rented a house there. God rest his soul. He rented a house in that neighborhood actually, and um, I was like, this is really nice. But Colorado Springs, because then it goes down and then. Uh, Dustin Kilgore lives on like the east side of town. Okay. Sure. The airports and then, yeah, but he lives on the east side of town. He bought a condo over there. They might be moving into a house though, but Colorado Springs is unique because there's a lot to do there. There yeah. really is. It's so much to do. Um, Manitou's not too far. Do you go to Manitou much? Oh yeah. I love the incline. Love the incline. You, have you done the incline before? Uh, last year I was like super proud of myself. I did it in just over an hour, and everyone's like, why are you so slow? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I, I thought I did a good job doing it in an hour. And they were like, oh, you're, <laughs> you're slow. Uh, yeah, and then um, did it with my wife in 2014 when we were out there. And um, we took our time, and it, we, we actually got there from Salt Lake City. We drove like nine hours, eight hours from Salt Lake City, and we went right to the incline and did it. Wow, that's a great way to get all that sitting out <laughs> or get elevation sickness whichever you whichever you choose because it's it's 2,000 feet in under nine tenths of a mile right yeah did you did you feel different did you feel the elevation well yeah I fall that fat and out of shape yeah <laughs> <laughs> my wife really struggled with it um and she you know she was a college athlete she's a division one college athlete and um still in pretty good shape but she really struggled with it it was real weird to me because she's always like eating the hikes up we do you know it's usually pretty easy for her she she just she was gonna do the dive out and then I waged uh, mental warfare on her ah uh. I was just like ah no I'm not gonna mention it because we were going to visit Dustin Kilgore and I'm like ah, I'm not even gonna mention it to Kilgore he <laughs> wouldn't even ask if you if you got it out and you wimped out he won't even say a word about it and she was like because there's a halfway, you're about two thirds up, right? And you can dive out. You can, there's yep. a tail out, right? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I just, I basically, I Jedi mind tricked her. And, um, <laughs> she's like, all right, I'm going to do it. And she ended up doing it. And awesome. There's two different ways to go down. Obviously, you can take the, the long hike down or you can just go directly back down. What do you normally do? Oh, I love the backside. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, and we, we just run it all the way down. Yeah, I yeah, I that's how I've done it. I think last time I did it, I walked down to the bailout point, and then I just took the backside trail, like you're saying. And but the, yeah, I mean, there's just so much to do out there. You guys, um, Air Force Academy is in a national forest. Did you know that? 
I did not know. I've been there once, but I didn't know that was a national forest. It, but it's it beautiful. That and parts of it go into it. It's like, because I was out there last year. Jaden Cox showed up for a practice one day to, to practice with Kilgore. Who you run into in Colorado Springs should never surprise you, right? Would you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the training camps and everything, for sure. I mean, it's just, yeah, as far even coaches – uh team usa anything right that's uh, that's all on the table right yeah you never know um okay where are you from originally lauren uh northeast ohio masculine ohio did you go to jackson perry or washington i went to washington go tigers <laughs> go tigers okay and then did you wrestle on the team at washington when you were in high school i did all four years all four years um it is it, it, High school has even changed. When did you graduate? I graduated in 2008. So you're an 08 grad. High school girls wrestling then to now, if you look at it, it it's a different deal altogether. For sure. Completely different. Completely different. Almost, almost makes me wish I was wrestling high school now. <laughs> yeah, because in Ohio, Ohio just asked to, to be sanctioned for the girls. Did you know that? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so – Ohio just asked to do that. We had, um, we had OACs had two state championships. The third one got canceled this year. And then um, they had a girls' state championship this year, another association, and it had a couple hundred girls. So it's obviously growing in Ohio, and Ohio's got over 11 million people, almost 12 million people. So it's, you know, it's one of the bigger states, one of the top 10 population states. So it's a good place. But what was it like being on the, the, the Maslin Washington team? I know you guys just call yourselves Maslin, but yeah. what was like Russell for Maslin High? Um, it was good. My my coaches were really supportive. You know, I wasn't on one of those teams. I hear a lot of girls that had like horror stories where their coaches tried to run them off or tried to scare them off. I did not have that. My coaches were awesome and they supported me. Gil Donahue, Greg Donahue, um, Thornsberry. Um, so they're all really supportive of me um, on the team. The boys didn't quite know what to think. I didn't have anyone ever speak bad against me. They were my, the guys were my friends, you know? Um, but I mean, they were not about to lose to a girl, <laughs> you know? So, so we would duke it out of practice. Um, you know, they, I didn't get a whole lot of people taking it easy on me. So there was that. I always had to fight my way through practice and fight my way through the varsity lineup. And yeah, it was one of those things where you roll up a tournament, roll up at a tournament and everyone's staring at you because you're the only girl on the team and everyone's whispering who's going to have to wrestle the girl. And then um, the guys on my team actually had my back pretty well. You know, they'd, they'd, if anyone ever said anything, they'd stand up for me or, you know, they had my back a lot. And uh, in fact, I remember our, what is it like 215 or something? I don't know. Bigger guy, 185. I don't know. He was, he was pretty jacked. He had like a six pack and everything like that. And he'd be like, I remember he came up to me one tournament and he's like, Hey, warm up with me. And I was like, what? No, why? We, we never wrestled. Why would I warm up? But he's like, just do it. And I was like, okay. And he's like, and so we start warming up and he starts like, like he's like an actor, like throwing himself to the ground, like, ah, and I'm like, you're making me look good. And he's like, those boys over there, they've been talking about you and they are scared. And so I was like, all right, cool. And so like, I'm playing along now. He's playing along and he's just like, he's like, yeah, now he's like, go in it, go, go in the tournament. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> How so, many years did you wrestle varsity? How many what? How many years did you wrestle varsity? I made varsity all four years. Um, but it was a struggle for me to make the lineup. It wasn't like I had the spot golden. You know, I had to wrestle off for the spot. And so our, um, our requirements to, to being varsity is that you had to win or sorry, compete in, was it 10, it was like 10 or 12, um, varsity matches. I think it was that you had to have, um, to be considered varsity. And so I, and we wrestled off for every competition. It's not like you wrestle off the beginning of the year and then you have it. No, you can challenge for every competition. And I would, I would challenge for every competition. And sometimes I would win the spot and sometimes I wouldn't. Um, I had more success when I uh, went down to 119. Um, that was when I had a little bit more success, but you know, I didn't know how to lose weight and know how to do it the right way. So yeah, wrestling guys at 125, 130, 135 pounds is not easy, especially in high school. Yeah. I mean, did you ever wrestle 103? No, I wish. Because, <laughs> like, you look at it now, I mean, 
how much weight do you have to cut to huh. 59 is 59 kilos is how much 130 yes so you're essentially wrestling similar weight now than you were as a high schooler yeah i'm wrestling the same weight. um i also this past year i competed at 57 kilos so 125 so that was my high school weight jeez oh pete yeah wow. okay so right out of Maslin high school did you ever make a district tournament i did oh no sectionals sectionals just sectionals. yeah and then top four go to sectionals in Ohio. What was the best you ever did at a sectional tournament? Oh, not very good. I think I won one match. And then, um, I don't know. Do you know Dante Rini? I wrestled Dante Rini oh, my no, senior Dante year. Rini. Come on. <laughs> I wrestled Dante Rini my senior year at sectionals, and he beat me. Yeah, so, so that was Dante it. Dante Rini was a state runner-up. Was it, I think, to Tony Jameson, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he was a, he was a state runner-up. So your district tournament would have it would have been like Dante Rene and Tony Jameson. Yeah. <laughs> that was the top. Yeah. And that was that was the year I made 119. So <laughs> yeah, it was tough. Yeah, he was a runner up to Tony Jameson that year. Yeah. Jeez, oh Pete. Wow, that's an and it, and here's the other thing. Northeast Ohio is comparable high school wrestling wise to Western PA, Lehigh Valley, Jersey, right? Like Northeast Ohio is one of the, you know, it's Central Valley in California, Southern California. It, it's a top five recruiting area for all the D1 teams. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you, you know, like maybe if it had been in Kentucky or a rural state like North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, you probably would have been in a, a qualification situation. Now we have had two girls qualify in Ohio. Um, one girl is about your age, maybe a Page Nemec. Page Nemec, right? Yep. She played um, soccer. soccer at Lake Erie College. And then uh, Olivia Shore qualified last year and lost in a placement match. Yep. I know both of them very well. Paige and I were on the same Fargo team. And um, I've worked with Olivia a few times. I coached Fargo, and she was on the Fargo team that I coached, um, Olivia Shore. So, Okay. When you, you're probably gonna have to end up competing against her, that's another crazy thing. Like you and her are gonna have to like seriously, you're gonna have to battle her for like U.S. national team, world team spots, right? I mean, she's we'll see if we end up in the same weight class potentially. Yeah, because she was a 19 pounder last year. No, it's just she was a six last year. She had like, I believe hand or shoulder surgery this year, and did not wrestle in the boys' season. And then you know, you know, Ohio canceled the state tournament this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, she, yeah, she's actually pretty tough. She – here's the crazy thing. The guy she beat first round was from Nemec's high school. Oh, wow. Beat a Crestwood guy first round. That dude came back and took fourth place. Wow. So, you know she's legit. She beat the guy who took fourth place first round. And he, so he had to wrestle back and win five matches just to get into third and fourth. Yeah. So you know she could beat half the guys in the bracket. She a got like a weird up. drop down. She got a weird drop down. She lost a tough match in her quarterfinal because she wins in the quarterfinal. She's a placer, right? She's in the semis. Um, but she is – she's pretty tough, man. Yeah, that's someone you're going to have to deal with. You know what I mean? She's very tough, yeah. Real tough. And then um, we've got younger girls. Actually, a girl um, from Cincinnati, the Cincinnati area – she was at Iron Sharpens Iron. Do you remember uh, Chloe Deerwester? Yes. Yeah, I know Chloe. Yeah. Yes, you know her dad. Chin whip queen. Holy smoke. <laughs> she chin whips everybody. But she's yeah. at, skilled in other areas. But, like, people shoot a hat outside on her. She's just chin whipping. It's crazy. But we have some elite girls in Ohio. And I think those two both won the, girl, the first annual girls' state championship. Uh, Coach Shore put it on. Coach Shore was a big part of putting it on. Um, Olivia's dad. The, the Shore family is incredible. Yes. Oh. They've done a lot for women's wrestling. Yes. And then they have – there's a Shore brother on the Air Force team, right? Yes, Graham. Graham Shore. He's – yes, we were a couple miles away from each other. This is so crazy. It's a small world, Lauren. Yeah, it, it's, it really is. It's a really small world. And so the growth of wrestling from, like, 2008 when you were a senior to now is, like – it's like sunflower seeds to watermelons. It's like, it's, it's seriously, it, it is like, 
exploded and we're, I, you know, if we get sanctioned with the COVID-19, right? I don't know if they're going to have any seasons this year. So I think that even if they sanction it this year, they're not probably going to have a tournament, but I'd like, to, obviously I'd like to see that. Um, that would be a step in the right direction for sure. Even if it just gets sanctioned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I think it's a no brainer. Someone actually just sent me a uh, Russell, like a girl shirt. I got in the mail like last week. I was nice. going to, it, uh, she was, it's uh, Brooke Zumas is her name. If you know, Brooke, I don't um, know Brooke. Brooke. She's a doctor um, on the East coast. Her dad's Lehigh alum, and she was really big into getting wrestling sanctioned in, like, PA. Oh, wow. okay. It's, it's, it's big in the fight for that. So she's just – yeah, she's awesome. She's actually really cool. Um, but one of my early days when I was working with Flo, Flo Wrestling, she was a photographer for Lehigh. She worked at USA Wrestling for a couple of years. She lived out in Colorado Springs. So huge advocate for uh, girls wrestling at the uh, – you know, at the level where it's, there's boys wrestling as well. Um, I know, like, Texas has sanctioned it, right? Yes. Jersey sanctioned. A bunch of these huge states, California. So, I mean, I don't know how I don't know how we can't sanction it. I, it. It would blow my mind if we didn't, to be honest with you. And this year and last year alone, the sanctioning throughout the, throughout the United States has grown. Like, we've got a lot of sanctionings. I can't even think of the states off the top of my head, but so many just in the last two years have sanctioned women's wrestling or they're emerging or, you know, things like that. So it's getting huge. Also, did you know the NCAA, we have uh, emerging sport status. Emerging sport status in the NCAA. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. But, okay, so we're talking about all this momentum, right? We're being – we're very positive. We're in a positive direction, right? But then there's still things where, you know, it's almost like, women's wrestling gets backhanded right yeah it gets to, it takes steps back um i know the hawkeye wrestling club cut they no longer have women wrestling at a hawkeye wrestling right correct they don't have it you were actually in iowa last, two years ago weren't you uh just last year I, I wrestled for the hawkeye wrestling club for four years from 2015 till 2019 so you were there and you didn't stay on long enough for that funding to be cut, and then the girls were left, right? You, were, you left on your own accord and went to Colorado Springs, correct? Correct. I left right before that. I left after Final X last year, and, uh, yeah, came out to Colorado Springs. So, so what's, what was the reason for the change, and what was, why I moved from Iowa City to Colorado, would you say? Um, the training partners. Um, you know, I, I mean – the training at Iowa was great, um, but that is the style that I wrestle. You know, I'm very, like, I, I wrestle the Iowa style, if you will. I'm a grinder. If we had 20-minute matches, 30-minute match, an hour match, I mean, that's that's what I love. Like, I'm good. Like, golden. My zone, right? And um, all that was good for me, but um, I knew I needed to change. I knew I needed to do something different. I was getting better at Iowa but it wasn't um, satisfying to me. And that's no blame on them completely on myself. But a lot of times you need to change the atmosphere um, so that you can better develop as an athlete and as a person. And so I know I needed to make that change. So where better place to go than the Olympic training center. Um, so I moved out here and now I train with, um, you know, three um, world champions and a world silver medalist and, um, contenders along the way as well. So I have um, a plethora of training partners and high level training partners. So, you know, you're there and, you know, who would you say you dealt with the most? Was it Tom? Was it Terry? Was it, was it Mark Perry when he came in? Like, who did you, who would you, would you deal with the most as far as would it be club coaches? Would it be team coach? Who would you deal with the most? Um, it was honestly a combination of all of them. So before Perry got there, I actually went to Iowa for Mike Duro. Um, and so he was like my main coach. And then, um, as time grew on, um, and I was in, Duro was spending a little bit more time in the Cornell wrestling room. And then also, you know, he, he got sick. And, um, so when that happened, you know, I, I'd say I dealt with, Tom a lot with the business side of things, the business aspect of things. Um, I mean, and you know, of course, if I asked for help, they'd help me. Um, and Terry as well. I dealt with Terry a lot for um, technique and in the practice room and things like that. So combination of both Tom and
helped a lot. Also, um, Brenton helped me out immensely. He would do, and he didn't have to do this in the mornings. Um, I was actually I working. Broke up. Who was it? Who helped you out in the mornings? You broke up a little bit. Oh, sorry, Brent Metcalf. Brent Metcalf. Okay, right before he left to yeah. go to Iowa to go to Ames. Yeah. I was actually still working. I I had a job at the time. I wasn't, you know, a full time athlete. Um, I had a job and I had to be at work at six thirty in the morning. And so he would come in at five a.m. and just work with me individually two to three times a week in the mornings. And that, I mean, that was fantastic. That was phenomenal. You know, being able to work with him and having that one on one. Not only that, but the commitment to me that early you know we were the first in the room um so and he didn't have to and he wasn't getting paid for that you know so just just to see the sport grow to help a female to help a, a wrestler he didn't even see me as that you know just to help another athlete um so I really appreciate him for that um got to work with McDonough a little bit um but Metcalf the most and then when Perry came in and he took over the Hawkeye Wrestling Club Perry was Mark Perry was my main coach and I actually um he, he and I, he was my coach, uh, prior to all the other women coming in. So we worked closely together for uh -huh. an entire year before, um, the rest of the women came in, the rest of the women came in the following year. And then he had all of us. Okay. So first, have you seen the video floating around of Dan Gable and it's coach DeRoe is like pummeling? Have you seen yeah. Dude, first off, he's probably 40 plus years old in that video. Do you realize that? You know what's funny? He looks so much like I thought he was Terry. I was like, oh, that's Terry. And then I looked at it, I was like, Coach Duro? <laughs> yeah, he Durow. looks great. I was yeah. looking, like, that's Mike Duro. It I is. I remember seeing him like he and he was how old was he when he had a he had a he has a young son, right? He has like a seven year old son, doesn't he? Yep. Yep. And and he's got a daughter too. They're uh Benson like, and Addie but he was like shredded. He was like a 50 plus year old man, just like shredded abs bumping out. I was like, this guy's a freak. <laughs> and he, yeah. did all that. He, he balanced being, you know, Hawkeye wrestling club coach and running the corn or the, the, what is it? Uh, Cornell, right? Yeah. Cornell college. Yeah. yeah. And it's, what's it? 25 minutes outside yeah. Iowa city. Yep. Yep. That is what's crazy about Iowa City is, and you, and you know, like a lot of the, a lot of everything revolves around wrestling in a major Big Ten university. Yeah, like it's right up there with football as far as its exposure with media. You know, the fans, the fan base is massive. It's rabid, and it's just like they're 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 really into wrestling and they're knowledgeable. And that had to be a tough tough to leave. But I, I get when you got to like change gears, right? Yeah. And they have some, and then you weren't there for, it's kind of a mess what happened, you know, to start the summer, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but you know, every, you got to leave, leave sooner or later, you know, everyone's got to leave, leave sooner or later. And I, I think it's uh, what you take from it when you go, you know, I mean, I, I left and I'd say um, I left on, on good terms, you know, I dealt with some things at Iowa as well, but Ultimately, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to train there and grateful for um, the coaches that worked with me and everyone, you know, that supported me while I was there. You know, it, it's not easy being in that Iowa wrestling room for a man and especially for a woman. I'm not saying it's harder to be a woman. I'm just saying it is not easy when you walk into a room full of studs like that and you're the only female, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh. Were you okay. the original? Were you were the the original woman at? Were you the first woman that the Hawkeye Wrestling Club had? Yes, that's correct. And then who all came in behind you? Uh, the Forest came in behind you. Who else came in behind you? So three three years after I was there, we had Ali Reagan join Forest Molinari, um, Kayla Miracle, and Michaela Beck. So and we added four more girls. Jesus, peace. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. That it and what would you say? How many more workout partners do you have now on a daily compared to when you had on a daily then? I I have a I have a lot more. Um well typically when the Olympic training centers open, right? Um I'd say there's like anywhere from twelve to fifteen females at the Olympic Training Center consistently. Not to mention the camps that come in and out and um, you know, if you're a national team, you can be like, Hey, coach Steiner, Terry Steiner, I'm coming in for these dates and then come in and train, you know, so we would get girls from 
Sunkiss, so that's out in Arizona, Arizona State, that would want to come in and train. We get college girls that would want to come and train. Not to mention, we're close to the Army base, so WCAP, so all of the WCAP athletes, they come in a couple times a week as well and train. So the amount of partners is, I mean, way more than double. It, it, so it, what's crazy is when you say there's just so much opportunity out there as far as international training than in any of the Big Ten states, right? Like even if you do Ohio RTC, you do Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, you do any of those other ones, they don't really have like a women's roster, right? Um, who did I just see is going to Southeast RTC? Um, was it Jenna? I just heard about it. Who is it? Jenna Burkett. Yeah, I think that's who it is. Yeah, Jenna Burkett. Jenna Burkett, I believe, is going out there. Yeah. I, we might have that wrong, but I believe that's who it is. So, like, the, these other RTCs are adding, right? They're trying to add and they're trying to, to build on great. them. And honestly, that I, I believe that is a first step towards getting a women's college program, right? If you've got women in the RTC – um, that can, you know, when they're finished competing, turn around and still be in the system and help coach or to take over that leadership position, you know, and help in get women. That's the first foot in the door, I believe, is at the RTC level. No, I, yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Je, uh, okay, so Lauren, where did you go right after Washington High School? Maslin High School, where did you, where did you, where did you go to college? University of the Cumberlands in Kentucky. It's a very small NAIA school, um, Baptist school. Um, but they had, they were one of the five that had women's college wrestling in 2008. <laughs> what were the original five that you're talking about? So Cumberlands? Yep. Um, uh, OCU, Oklahoma City University, Missouri the Valley. Star? The star? Yep, the star. Yeah. Yep. Missouri Valley University, um, Jamestown. And what is the fifth? Jamestown, North fifth Dakota? Jamestown, yep. North Dakota. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. What about Life U? Did Life U, were they one of the originals? No. They, they only recently started, uh, I think when I started coaching, so around 2012-ish. Okay. So when you were there, when you had a national tournament, first off, that's who you had to wrestle. And here's the other thing people don't know. In college, women wrestle freestyle. They don't wrestle folk style. Correct. Right. And what's weird is we've got this weird disconnect with, with our whole folk style system and freestyle system. Right. That's bizarre. Yep. We should all be doing what you're, what you did in college. We're the only country that wrestles folk style. Yep. Yep. Um, Joe Williams and I went to Russian nationals one year and we were on the train driving back to Mo or riding back to Moscow from Kazan. 20 hour train ride and he showed the guys he showed all these competitors from russian nationals he showed them like the journeyman duels highlight video and it was like <sighs> darian caldwell was in it brett metcalf was in it all these just freaking hammers world team members ncaa champs they were laughing at it <laughs> they were laughing really? at it. yeah they were like what it, like why is that guy rolling guys are granby rolling and flipping and they were like what are they doing they're exposing their backs. That was four Actually, points. They, it was like the, it boggled them and they were laughing at it. They, they didn't get it. They didn't get like that a guy was scoring by diving in between another guy's legs and doing a foot, foot pass, right? Because they're exposing their back the whole time, two or three times. And they were like, he just tuck fall themselves. They didn't, you know what I mean? Like they were, it, it was humorous to them, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we should be doing what you're doing. How did you do at uh, Cumberland's? How, what was your best? finished best year you had um I was a an all-american so I was a four-time all-american but um my top place was third place and, and you know I attribute that to a lot of things you know not not having good recovery not have you know what I mean and just not 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 having but not knowing not learning not um you know actually investing in the sport in more ways you know so yeah with the way that it's set up now the team, the growth is obviously what, how many, how many college teams have women's wrestling now? I know oh it, gosh. got to be over 30, like, right? No, we're like, I think we're like over 60. Like it's, it's a lot. Yeah. And it's, it's growing so much. That's, I don't even know the number. It's growing so fast. Last I heard it's like 64, but it's, it's beyond that. I'm sure. Yeah. I know Tiffin has it over here. 
um, yep. in Northwest Ohio. Tiffin has it. And my, cause where I'm from in Oak Harbor, Oak Harbor is about 25 minutes from Tiffin. And some of the Tiffin wrestlers actually are working with my brother right now, living with my brother and you know, that they run the team, you know, they, they practice, they, they do everything together. You know what I mean? They do everything yep. together. And it's, it's kind of wild to see two teams in conjunction with one another. Cause when you were at Cumberland's they had a, they had a men's team too, right? They did. Yeah. So seeing that culture and how that goes, do you have any people that you went to college with who are married now? Oh yeah. Tons of them. That's, that's <laughs> that, right. <laughs> Most, almost all of them. Right. I just visited a, actually my, one of my drill partners. She's in Virginia beach. Her husband's a Navy seal. Wait, Navy. Yes. He's a seal. Yeah. Um, so he, he's on the seal team and I got to go down and meet him for the first time and stuff, but she was my um, college training partner and they're in Virginia beach. And so that's pretty cool. But I'm saying, are there guys who are on the wrestling team and girls who are on the wrestling team who are now married? Is there any of that? Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a couple couples that continue to get married. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that that's that, you know I think that ha I mean it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna happen, right? All the wrestlers dated wrestlers, right? <laughs> there you go. And I think that's just like a product of it. I don't think that's bad either. I mean, I don't think that that's a bad thing by any means. I, I got a feeling that it's going to be a high likelihood that their kids are probably they're going to be really competitive or wrestlers. <laughs> I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm just going to put that out there, Lauren. Okay. So, okay. So you go from when you graduate from there, 14, 13, when did you graduate? 2013. 13. So right from there, did you jump right into where did you, what was it between Iowa city and Cumberland? Where did what did you do? I stayed at Cumberland. So I knew I actually knew I wanted to continue competing as an athlete and I also knew that I wanted to coach and, um, but to be honest, I did not want to coach at Cumberland's because I'm like, I know these girls, these girls are my teammates. I don't, I don't want to turn around and coach them. That's awkward and uncomfortable. Um, but unfortunately, again, you know, we didn't have numbers like 64 college teams. Then there was a, I don't know in 2013, how many we had, but there were no grad assistant positions available other than at the University of the Cumberland. So we actually had a head coaching change. And um, so the coach that came in, um, he actually coached me in a, um, at Junior, Junior Worlds and Pan Ams. And he was like, hey, stay, coach with me, coach with me. And I was like, ah, I'm trying to get a job somewhere else. And um, I wasn't able to. So um, the University of the Cumberland's position was open. So I stayed there, but the only reason I didn't want to stay is because how awkward is it to turn around and coach your teammates and your friends, you know? Yeah, because you probably lived with some of them, hang out with them. Yeah. Probably doing stuff you weren't supposed to be doing with them, right? Yeah. As far as like if you go out to a party or something like that, now you got to turn around and tell that person they're not supposed to be doing that stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, and that's much easier to do. Awesome. Yeah. It's much easier to do in a program where they didn't know you. <laughs> so exactly. No, it's easy because you've got their separation, right? Yeah. And when you yeah. don't have that separation, it's really hard. It, it's yeah. really hard. So in 2012, when you, were a, when you were a college student, you went to Pan Ams and medaled? Yeah. Um, oh, junior Pan Ams. Right? Yeah? Junior, and, junior Pan Ams and Junior Worlds. It was junior Pan Ams and Junior. Okay. So how many world teams have you been on either as a, a – the the actual world team member or u.s national team member how many teams have you been on um three just three so not not too many but yeah just three so wait <laughs> on the years you made final x you're still a u.s national team member though um the first year so the final x has only happened twice yeah. and i was in i was in the final x twice however the first year um i wrestled it was actually a wrestle off court the the national the last national team spot so fourth third and fourth and I lost to Kelsey Campbell so I took fourth so therefore I did not get the national team spot that year you didn't get your hundred eighty dollars a month stipend that year did you <laughs> I did not I ended up what with zero that? hold on what is it what is the stipend to be a U.S. national team member if you're number if you're three on the ladder what is it oh gosh I haven't been three so I don't know I only know for two <laughs> what's two what's two it is not a lot. Let me tell you, it is not enough to live on. That Wait, is for hold on. Sure. Was I joke? Was I even exaggerating a little when I said 180 bucks? It's probably 180 for third for third place. And you know what I heard is I heard that the stipend bucks a month. I think it's honestly I think it's 250 bucks a month. I th I think you're right. I think it's 250 for the third place. 
Um, I heard the stipends have not changed since like uh, Terry Steiner and all like his heir. So like oh oh six seven eight. Yeah. It's twelve. So I've heard the twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen years. Yeah, and even before that, I've heard the stipends have not changed. <sighs> Lauren, I don't know what to say. That's yeah, <laughs> that's disappointing. Because what you guys do is so hard. What you girls do is so hard. What what the U.S. national team members, the Greco does, what the what the freestyle, the men's and women's freestyle is like. And like a lot of people, they don't know wrestling. It's such a lifestyle sport. You know what I mean? It's not like there's just so much. And like you said, you know so much now from when you were a college athlete. You didn't, you know maybe you weren't recovering right. Maybe there you know there's all this other stuff that you've learned about being an athlete now that you didn't know when you were fresh out of Maslin High School at the Cumberland, right? You used to know this stuff, right? Yeah. It's kind of crazy because I, that third and fourth thing, that the final X thing where it was third and fourth, that's confusing to me. <laughs> it is confusing. What? So we were like, we were like the pre-card, right? So all the third and fourth place matches, and they didn't do that this year. This year, or sorry, this not this year. We didn't have one this year. Um, in 2019, the final X, it was only the athletes going for first and second. You know, the athletes competing for the world team spot. Um, the year prior, the first year that they had it, they wrestled all of the, the athletes wrestling for that national team spot, the third and fourth place spot. They wrestled all of us first, and then they brought it on the um, the premiere show, if you will. Did an undercard. You were on the undercard. Yes, I was on the undercard. Okay, the year you were second, right? What year were you second? What year were you number two on the ladder? 2019. So just last year? Yeah. How much has that motivated you to obviously – you know, Tokyo is back a year now. We're not going to have a 2020 of anything, basically. Basically, the only thing 2020 we had was Ottawa, right? Yeah. The two tournaments, the, the Pan Am qualifier and the Pan Ams, right? Yeah. So the two things we had in 2020, yes, that's it, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so 2020 is going to be a wash. We already know that, right? Mm -hmm. um, how motivated are you from how you felt walking off the mat after – it was the best two out of three, right? Right, you lose a best two out of three, right? At final action. Uh, I um in the in from world team trials. Yeah, world team trials was best two out of three. I won. I lost the first match and then won the second two. Okay, so yeah. but losing the final X to get on the team last year, right? Yes, I lost the final X and then took and that therefore I was second. Okay, that was the best two out of three, wasn't it? Yes. So, so I lost two matches. You lost. Two, you're zero and two in those. Yes. Well, how motivating is the 0-2 at Final X, being the, being the training partner, not being the person to represent the United States? How motivating has that been for you? Um, you know, there was a lot, there's a lot of things going on that, at that time. You know, that's, that's when, um, when I was leaving Iowa, that's when, you know, I, I, was, I competed against Allie Reagan in that Final X. And so she was a, um, a Hawkeye Wrestling Club girl as well. And, um, so competing against her in the final X, um, I, I wasn't training at Iowa at that time. I was still repping the Hawkeye wrestling club. However, I actually came out to Colorado Springs to train because I was like, I'm not going to be in the same room as when I'm preparing for this one-on-one -on -one match with this person. So I came out to Colorado Springs to train and, um, there was a, there was a lot of things, um, that went down about that, about that match and things like that. Um, but I, I mean, I think it was very motivating. That was a huge point in my wrestling, you know, to overcome that and to be like, to put that aside and be like, okay, hey, this is still possible for you. You know, you can still make this world team. Like, obviously not this year, but in the future, like, um, no one is unbeatable. You know, you just got to find the way to do it, find the way to make it happen, you know? Um, so I think that was, that's actually been huge in, in my wrestling career. That was, um, a very good thing for me to go through so you've competed at what are the all the weights you've competed at and where are you going to be coming up for for tokyo 2021 when you try and get on the team um i've competed at 59 kilos and when there was a 58 kilos and 60 kilos and i will be competing at 57 kilos so you're going to actually drop down to what's at 125.5 i believe yep 125 
is that a good cut for you or how, how is that cut? Honestly, the first time I made 125 was at the U S open. So at 57 kilos was at the U S open. And that was the best cut, if you will, that I've had. I felt better at making 57 than I ever did at making 59 or 60. So, okay. When you're at, when you know, you got to get the 57, do we even know when your next weigh-in could potentially even be? No. Like we don't know if it's going to be next April. We don't know. Like, we don't know if it's December. It's not going to happen. They're not going to do the open in December. We have nothing as far as we know at this moment on the board um, for USA wrestling events. What is the highest you think you, that you get in this interim period where it's hard to catch workouts, the, the Olympic, the training center's closed. You got to figure it out and get creative. What's the highest that you try and what's the range you try and stay in Lauren? Um, honestly, I haven't been worrying about like, I'm, what I'm working with right now is I'm changing my habits and I'm changing my diet. This is a perfect time to change your habits. Right. Um, so I've actually started working with a nutritionist and, um, tracking all of my food and doing the whole meal meal prepping when I need to. And I have a list of foods that I can eat, a list of foods that I can't eat and all that stuff. And, um, it's actually been fun, <laughs> you know, and, um, just instead of, I don't want to ever cut weight ever again. Um, I know how to do that. And I, what I'm training for now is to, I want to walk around. I want to do it the right way, if you will. I want to have a set amount of, I have to eat this many carbs a day, this many protein, this, you know, that type of thing. Um, it's, it's still training, you know, it's just, just, um, in a different way. So, um, I'm excited to be doing it this way and I want to walk around, you know, at 58 kilos, maybe I'm a kilo over and have to do a little bit of extra cardio sauna golden. So that Wow. You want to, you want to be really close. You're like yeah. one of those people that wants to be like a 30 minute, 40 minute workout away from making weight. For sure. I mean, just think of how much more powerful and explosive I'll be when I'm not, um, you're not dehydrating your body to make weight. You're not sucking down. You know, we don't have that, um, 24 hour weigh in anymore. It's not the night before weigh-ins anymore. Two hour weigh-in. Hour. Two hour weigh-in. What's that? Yeah. Two hours, right? Yep, two hour away in. But if you think about it, that includes warm up too. So you, you warm up an hour before, so you really have an hour to recover. Yeah, you're right. Wow, that's yeah. a game changer for Americans. I think. I think that's really good for for you as Americans, because foreigners just they just do it different. They don't <laughs> do as much pounding and high intensity as you as you do uh, on the U.S. national team. I think like. You ever see some of those foreigners outside smoking a cigarette and then go right, and you go there like, like some of I mean not some of them are they'll they'll drink within like a week of competition or they're smoke it's crazy. Yeah. I think they're doing the high intensity training that you're doing. I mean a, um, yeah, I think I'm I'm sure they're all different, but yeah. They're just yeah, they're not built like you folks. I just in my opinion, like what I've seen and all the international stuff I've seen, they're just and – and you know how, like, when you tie up with them, they feel like all, oh, like, some of them real gooey, and you're like, what is going – they're not what – what's, what's the trap here? What are they going to do, right? Like, do you know yeah. what I'm talking about, that feel? Yeah, it's like uh, Japan and China feel like they're, like, real flowy and, like, elusive, if, yeah. you know? Like, you feel like you're wrestling, like, a water wave or something. Oh, yeah, you're and like, then and then the more European countries are more in um, Pan American countries, they're more like, uh, like you're wrestling a robot or a rock and they don't want to move with you at all. Yeah. It's almost like when you're wrestling someone who's really strong that doesn't know how to wrestle almost, but they know how to wrestle. So right. it's, <laughs> it's a it's big just difference. A yeah. <laughs> it's a big difference, but yeah, it's just like, there's so much you have to deal with. Um, mental aspect, right? We're in like, we're in the mental aspect right now. Like there's a lot of, this is really hard for young kids. This is hard for adults right now. We're in, in and out of these quarantine stages and there you get data from the CDC from now they're doing a lot of it. Most of it at a state level, right? Um, staying mentally on your game, Lauren, how hard is it right now with workouts aren't regular? partners come and go you got to figure out what you're going to do how hard is it to stay mentally on your game and focus seeing yourself winning a gold medal in tokyo in 2021 
well, I don't think it's, it, it's not hard. The reason it's not hard is because um, I know my mental aspect is solid. And um, this is the time that I personally excel because I know everyone else isn't doing the things that I'm doing. I know a lot of people are struggling to get their workouts and, and I'm very focused on what I need to do and to accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. And all, all this is right now, uh, COVID has been very detrimental to a lot of people. It's affected a lot of, shoot, it's, you know, it's affected me. I'd be lying if I said it didn't affect me. However, am I going to allow that distraction to deter me from what I am determined to do? No. So I'm going to use this time to get better. And that's why I got a nutritionist. I'm changing the way that I'm eating. That's why I created goals for myself to accomplish during this time. You know, um, when we had the stay at home orders, I'm sure everyone was going crazy. I was going crazy. I was like, I'm getting depressed, you know? So I had to create goals for myself um, in order to stay on that goal, on that game. You know, we're not competing right now, but there's a lot of areas that I can zoom in on and that I can focus in on and really alter and change for the better. And so I have only been getting COVID honestly was awesome for me <laughs> just because I've gotten so much better. It's that grit and that grind through the hard times that allows you to be successful, you know, and, and, um, that's what I feel like I'm doing right now. And I continue to do, you know, it's finding a way around it. Okay, fine. That way didn't work. I'll go this way. Oh, that didn't work. All right, fine. fine. Um, allowing yourself to be fluid and not being rigid in how you get the results, but allowing yourself to um, find the results in whatever means necessary. Find a way. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you, you know you're you're honing in on the things that you know you need improvement. You know, like, for sure. I like that. And then, but finding workouts, I think a lot of people have found excuses not to find workouts. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of that. I mean, just me personally, I'm trying to get my wife and I back into working out and doing stuff, but um, just, and it's not at the level you're working out. We're just trying to like <laughs> not have, you know, couch potato bodies, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. or you're trying to be the, you know, the top of the, of the heap in the world, right? You got to make the, the U S national team. And then most likely if you make that, I think you're in a position to be a metal contender, in my opinion, from what I've seen from the rest of the world. I mean, you know, you got to have a shot, right? At this point, as far along as we've come, I mean, from 2008 to Maslin High School to now, <laughs> this in 2008. So um, I like your, your mental preparedness and I, I like your confidence in general. I think that that's a huge thing that um, other people, that I'm, it doesn't even matter if it's girls wrestling, women's wrestling, whatever. I think if you're a high level athlete, you should be looking at how you're looking at it. Like with, this has been an opportunity for me to self-reflect. This has been an opportunity for me to eat better. To, to make improvements and make, like you're saying, this is the time to make good habit changes, right? For sure. I mean, for sure. No doubt. No doubt. Um, okay. So I say that, you know, we've been most generally very positive, right? We've talked about positive stuff. I'm going to talk about the negative things that people talk about. You know, I don't think we talked about the, in the Hawkeye wrestling club. I don't think we even made that. I don't even think we made like that. That was a negative thing, how they cut the funding, right? Like, at the end of the day, they have their reasons. I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have that inside story, Lauren. You would know more about it than me, and I'm just, quite frankly, I just I don't know what, their, what the motivation was for what they did. You know? I honestly, um, I don't know that there was a, cut, a funding cut. Um, I, don't, I don't know all that it entails with that. Um, but what I do know is when I was there, so unless things were changed or separate, when I was there, um, the men's and women's funding was all together, all in one. Um, so I don't know exactly what, what happened with that. Um, so as far as I know, I don't know that it was, I know that's the story that's been circulating, but I don't know that it actually was a funding cut, whereas it was maybe just an athlete cut. My ignorance of that whole situation is I just don't know much. So I can't yeah. really speak to it. You know what I mean? But I think a lot of people really tried to put a lot on Tom Brands, Terry Brands. And, you know, I've, Dan Dennis is now the Hawkeye Wrestling Club coach, and he's just come in, so I don't really think you can put much on him. And now Mark left, and Mark's out in Arizona, right? Correct. Yeah, he's at the Sunkist, yeah. So Martin, and, and, you know, so it's just some, some things happened, right? Some, there's a change of coaches, and I just don't know much about that situation. What I do know about is what the New Jersey RTC um, – first off, 
what I can tell you about the New Jersey RTC, you're probably going to see some of the biggest advocacy for women's wrestling that you've ever seen out of the New Jersey RTC. Um, Coach Ayers, his daughter, is one of the better wrestlers, one of the girl wrestlers, better girl wrestlers in New Jersey. Right? Oh, nice. So I don't know if you watch he, Coach Ayers does. He's the head coach at Princeton. He does a lot of um, technique and stuff. And a lot of the stuff is with his daughter. So he's doing a lot of uh, – he's a huge advocate for – women's wrestling right because daughter is one of the better girls in new jersey so he's a huge advocate for it are you still with me lauren yes i'm still here i had to go get my phone charger <laughs> so when we're talking about it new jersey rtc pat downey made some comments right bringing up pat you know pat's been all the rage and all the talk for the last four days right he made some comments about basically what's what flow wrestling had a card and there was no female freestyle wrestling on it, correct? Yes, that's correct. So Pat made some comments like, hey, you don't draw. You're not going to get paid. We'll get paid because you don't draw. Right? And then yeah. it spiraled into more than that. Okay? And then eventually it ended with him saying he was going to – somebody called somebody a little wet nugget. Was that it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he called Sarah Hildebrandt a wet nugget. Something about a little nugget. Yeah, a little wet nugget, something like that, right? And first off, how all of the women wrestlers reacted to it? I didn't hear anybody cry like, "Oh, you're gonna be this." I didn't really. I didn't, what I saw was all like them laughing at his comment, right? I didn't see any like, "Oh, hey, you're really gonna physically beat us up." Um, but when you see what Pat does, you know Pat in person. And then you see Pat online. Is he two different people, would you say? Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's, he's definitely um, a different person on social media um, than he is in, in person, you know, I believe. Um, uh, and, and that's unfortunate that the entire social media world doesn't get to see who he is in person. So. And, okay, so in that situation, do you just brush a lot of that off and blow it off? Like, yeah, whatever, he's just – He's just popping off. He's running his mouth. He's being pad online. Um, you know, a little bit of both, right? You have, you have to realize, um, I guess what it is, you know, I mean, you gotta, you gotta understand the source, right? But it is also disrespectful to speak in that way, you know? So, so, um, maybe a little offense, um, in one way, but also like understanding the source, um, no offense to Pat Downey, but you know, understanding the source and where that's coming from is also, uh, you know, a big deal as well. So I, you know, I, I don't know, um, as far as that goes, you know, do you just brush it off? Do you, uh, make a big deal of it? You know, how do you, because the thing is, you know, we want to be taken seriously as women. Um, you know, ultimately we do want, equal pay. We do want, um, all these things that the men want, you know, we want our sport of not just women's wrestling, but wrestling in general to go to a level where it's, where we're able to self-sustain as athletes. You know, it's not easy to be a senior level athlete, um, committing your life to it and not getting paid for it. You know, we're not, I, you know, I quit my job. If you want to fully chase these dreams and things like that, you it's hard to work. You can't really work if you want to fully commit yourself to that. And in order to do that, you know, we, we need to get, um, pay for the things that we're doing. So competing, you know, paying, competing, um, pay for camps and clinics and things like that. And the way that we're going to do those things is not by negative talk and bashing each other, you know? So, so that is serious as far as that goes. Um, you know, every, everyone knows Pat Downey and his social media um, source or the way that he is on social media and stuff. But I don't know that that's something that you just brush off like, Oh, that's Pat because it, it kind of isn't okay to bash people. It's never okay to bash people. It's never okay to talk down to people no matter what. Um, you know, that's the way that I believe. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just, I don't conduct myself in life like that nor on online. So I, it's foreign to me, you know, obviously I'm just like, yeah, I just, that's not how I would ever address anybody or talk, talk to anybody or, or things I wouldn't say. Now, listen, if things were, were, you know, and it's like, everyone's like, well, 
what he's saying has a point to it. Maybe they don't draw like the men draw. Well, I think that if you look at the growth of the sport of women's wrestling in the last, since you were a senior at, you know, Maslin High, it's, it's exploded. There's obviously a future there. And if I'm a subscription-based service, I know that I can go. Like, so example, Flow Wrestling, it's everything, only they care about is subs. They only care about subscriptions. So my thing is, if I can go and tap into female wrestling market that is not that, you know what I mean? Like whether they haven't gone to track wrestling or them, and most people have accounts for both, right? Most people mm-hmm. have subscriptions to both. Yeah. My thing is like, I, I'm attacking, I'm aggressively attacking my subscription base as to draw as much of the subscriptions that I can if I'm them for female wrestling, which is girl wrestling now, right? Because they're younger girls. And you've got to, and you have to build the stories. Yes. You know, like the, the, hearing your story is super important. Like I, you know, I can be better. I need to be better, right? I need to be better about covering, you know, girls and women's wrestling. I need to be better. I covered the first girls state championship for OEC at, at uh, Harrison high school, covered the second one at, you know, Youngstown at the Cavelli center. I missed the one this year with the, the George shore and that they put on. Right. I missed that one, right? So I need to be better now. I could sit here and tell you excuses that I went and watched my wrestling, my nephew's league tournament. Both my nephews wrestled. I did the broadcast. I killed two birds with one stone, right? But I still, you know, maybe I could have carved out a day before or after because I believe it was a two or three day competition. I probably could have made it there. So like, I got to find a way to be better to help that out too. You know what I mean, Lauren? Like I need to interview more of you and your teammates, right? Don't you think that would help? For sure. Yeah. The more exposure that we get and you're exactly right. It's the stories. Like how many times have you watched the Olympics in a sport that you're not necessarily familiar with? Like say gymnastics or say track and field, us all being wrestlers, you know, say a sport that we're not highly familiar with all the athletes, even the athletes, um, whether they're representing the U S or another country, we don't necessarily know all of their backgrounds and all of their stories. However, when you see a quick, quick video clip of the struggles they went through, maybe the last Olympics, they broke their leg. You know, I, I follow the Olympic channel on Instagram and some social media outlets and stuff. And there's, they show athletes all the time. I don't know their story. You know, in 2004, they made the Olympic team and they, they finished last, you know, in the hurdles or something. And then in 2008, they tripped and fell and took out three people, you know, and then in, um, you know, 2012, they won the gold medal you know, but showing their progress along the way and their stories and their backgrounds, where they come from, some of the countries training, you know, outside running under gunfire, you know, just a lot of different things. That's, that's, it's your heart. It's your passion. It's your emotion that we're all emotional people as wrestlers. And, um, it's that passion and that heart and that drive for the sport that draws you to it, that draws you to people's stories. And, um, I think that's important to expose that about, not only our women, I mean, yes, yes, definitely about our women so that we can grow our sport and so that we can grow our exposure. But even for our men, again, if we want to make this, if we want to make wrestling a sport where we can be professional athletes, you know, I I consider myself a professional. Why? Because I, I have four college degrees and I don't use them. Why? Because I'm chasing after this dream. Do I make a lot of money? No. (laughs) Do I have a lot of people that help and support me so that I am able to live? Yes. Um, do, would I like to make this lifestyle easier for those behind me so that they can become like real professional, um, athletes and real professional sports. I and mean, you think of if we were able to give the resources to those behind us, like how much better we will be at chasing that Olympic medal at chasing, you know, that world medal, that world title, we're getting better. We had, um, four world champs this year alone, you know, but how much better can we get? How much better can we be as a country and supporting our athletes? financially is huge you know the more finances and the more resources that we have the better we're able to be what's crazy about your team you know united states of america if you look at if you look you know you have two bona fide stars and and obviously um adeline right how many world titles has adeline won five at right and then obviously helen 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 beat i want you to think about this Helen did the equivalent of almost what Rulon Gardner did to Corellin. You, you realize that, right? Yeah. And that, that story is huge. 
here's the thing with you. You probably are going to have to compete it against talent, right? Like, yeah, that's that's right. That's who you're going to have to compete against, right? Like, you understand reality. But, like, don't you think her story is going to be one of the biggest stories out there in 2021? Don't you think they're going to talk about she's got to overcome what is she? She's had concussions, I believe, right? She's, she's yep. you know, that, and that, that's no joke, right? Like, messing with, with the neurons, no joke. So she's battling all this other stuff and, you know, she doesn't want to have the letdown and, you know, look, look who she's going to have to go through to get on the team. Don't you think that's going to be a huge story? And don't you think we can all capitalize off of that and everybody can win in beyond telling, you know, Helen's story, telling Adeline's story, telling Lauren's story, right? Tell, telling Jenna's story, telling everybody's story, right? Telling Allie's story, whoever, you know, everybody's story, whether you're competing in it or not, that's how you build storyline that's how you draw spectators that's how you draw a fan base that's you have to tell people stories yeah and for and, sure. and you got to commit to it and now i don't know what flow wrestling is going to do you know i i worked with those guys for over 10 years right like i don't know if they're going to try and like what's it the 25th it's the 15th in 10 days lauren they come to you right now and they're like hey give me a thousand bucks come wrestle come wrestle uh alley right you and alley well, Bill, it is the former teammates, right? Whatever they say, whatever, it doesn't matter. Are you going to want to take that on 10 days notice, $1,000 in travel? I don't know. I don't know so if it's he, worth it to you. Jakara made a really good point about that, you know, is it worth, you, you got to think, this is the Olympic year, right? Yeah. Is $1,000 worth the injury risk? $1,000, is that worth the in, injury risk of potentially submitting your olympic gold medal you know what if what if you get injured is a thousand dollars worth it probably not you know what what's it going to be worth to you you know what is your olympic gold medal worth to you that potential injury risk or not here's what i'll say and here's my cautionary tale to you to everybody who's a u.s national team member and i know that competitors like to lay it on the line whether it's for a pack of gum whether it's for pride whether it's for a million dollars competitors yeah. want to lay it on the line but what did David Taylor get out of Beat the Streets two years ago? What did David Taylor get out of that Beat the Streets when he blew his knee out against? I guess he was injured, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's my point. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, right. Your competitors, you want to lay it on the line. You, you want to win by nature, whether it's for a million bucks, thousand bucks, pack of gum, whatever it is, you want to win. Right. But what did that do for David? You know what I mean? Like David, they're, they're, Yaz Donnie has no chance against David Taylor had David Taylor ever got hurt there. Well, now Yaz Donnie and, you know, he's the Iranian who, who just shoves everybody around and, get, and gets push out points and he's pulling on your head and he, he tech, everybody wilts under this guy. Well, David Taylor challenges him and puts the guy in positions he doesn't normally wrestle in and it breaks the guy. You know what I mean? Well, now what, what, what did they, do you see my point, Lauren? Do you yeah, see my yeah. point? Like, yep. What What happens? And David Taylor's on the card. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's wild about it to me. David yeah. Taylor's well, on and, the card. And you and you risk injury every time you step on the mat, whether it's at practice. That's the other or, thing. That's the other thing. Hey, I I went and picked up sandwiches for my wife and I today. I got on the road now at sixty mile an hour. Right. Could I, yeah. have a blowout? Could I have a blowout and roll over and die? Sure. Right? I mean, when I run on the road, I was riding my four-wheeler on the road today, 45 mile an hour. Could someone not see me and hit me and kill? Sure. I, you run the risk for everything, right? Um, yeah. Well, and I trail run. I'll probably trail run later. I'll run two miles, right? Do I run the risk of dying and having a heart attack? Sure. Yeah. Right? I'm a 255-pound guy, you know, running in 90-degree heat. Is there... Sure, but like, at what point can we really protect ourselves to the point where it's 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 unhealthy, right? Mm -hmm. But look at David Taylor. Look at that with the Drew Foster thing. Yeah, that that was my point. Yeah, he got hurt. He got yeah. hurt. In the charity match, right? It, it's risk versus reward. You sure. know, like it's, it's the, a balance. It's the squeeze, right? Yeah. And that's the crazy thing. So okay, you talk about it's really hard. You're like, ah, you know, it's hard to be a professional athlete. How do you financially support yourself? Like, are camps and clinics, now that you're not having them, where are you getting in? How are you able to, to keep your head above water, Lauren? Camps and clinics are my biggest. That's 
the biggest way that I support myself. You know, we get this small stipend from USA Wrestling and from, um, I'm New York Athletic Club, so I get um, a small stipend from them as well. But even combined, you know, um, bills and things are expensive. So that does not cover enough to live. It's not enough to live off of, you know, especially when you're number two and not number one. Um, it's not, not yet number one. Let me, let me just reinforce that. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's definitely not enough to live off of right now. So yeah, camps and clinics are, that's my biggest, um, way that I make income for myself. And that's, especially in the summertime, um, doing camps and clinics. And then I save that money and that's what I live off of all year so that I can continue to train. You know, I, I, like I mentioned before, I do have four college degrees. I have three undergrads and my master's and I tried to work when I was at the university of Iowa in the Hawkeye wrestling club. Um, I tried to work while I was there and man, that was difficult. Even, even small minuscule jobs, not using my degrees. Um, I was, I worked for a contractor. I worked, um, at a like a daycare I worked at a rec center just doing and all those three at one time you know so that I had flexible schedules and everything like that but all of that's difficult because you're not able to yes I was able to make the workouts but I wasn't able to get enough sleep to do the recovery you know because you're prepping for work you're going to work when you're at work you're not you're not relaxed you're not you know thinking about wrestling you're not doing your wrestling homework you're scouting you know so so just working is taking away from all those other aspects of wrestling that are not on the mat um so yeah um it's been really hard during covid and during the shutdown and the lock time because this is the time the season that i make my money to live off of for the rest of the year so i'd be lying if i was saying that i wasn't a little bit scared and nervous because i'm like oh man I, you know what's what's gonna happen what's going on here so yeah you got any coming up? Any camps, clinics, anything like that? I do. I have been lucky enough where I am. I actually do have one um, this weekend, actually, in Oklahoma. So that'll be good. What is the turnaround on that? You fly out like Friday, work Saturday, Sunday, fly back Monday. Like, what do you what do you do? Yeah, it, it's um, it deter. It just depends on the camper clinic itself. Usually, I do like two days. Uh, two day camps. Um, it depends on what the person hiring me, what the coach um, actually is wa wanting or looking for. Um, but typically I do um, two, two day camp or two day clinic, um, two sessions a piece. So. Okay. Well, I was trying to, you know, we're, we're trying to maybe set something up, get you out here back to Ohio. Cause you know, like we're saying the, the girls wrestling is it's exploding, but the point you made to me yesterday was a pretty good point. You're like, well, I, I can teach boys as well. And that's yeah. point. like, no, it's like wrestling's wrestling. Yeah. If, if a, a, an elite high school guy or a beginning novice kid can pick something up from you, they've learned we've won. If, that's the big thing. Learn some one thing from every camp you go to. That's what we you know. That's what I, you know, like my high school coaches told me what I told kids when I go, if you can pick up one thing, the camp's been worth it. Right. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I, I thought it was funny. I did a camp in, um, in North Carolina and it was, it was a girl's clinic and, um, I had 12 girls and one boy and the boy showed up because he, you know, he's dating one of the girls. And so he just showed up to help. He's like, I'll be your assistant. And I'm like, okay. So like, he was like too good to go through the clinic, but I, I, uh, made sure I utilized him as my training partner for the, <laughs> but I, I definitely showed technique on him the whole time. And it's funny. His, um, his grandma that was with him and like would pick him up from workouts and things like that at the end of the clinic she's like he learned stuff from you and I'm like I'm not surprised <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> well, doesn't mean you can't learn wrestling from me <laughs> I know I, I, I just thought it was the I get, I get where you know, uh, yeah <laughs> I get it sure okay but like yeah that you you can still teach people things um even boys can learn from girls girls can learn from boys it goes both ways, right? I mean, I mean, I, if I had Icho at a camp, I'm sure I'd pick something up from Coyote Icho, right? Like, I, I obviously know you yeah. would, right? We would, we would learn something from her, even if she's speaking Japanese and we can't pick. We're going to be able to watch how she warms up. We're going to be able to watch how she's preparing, whatever it may be, how she's doing certain techniques. She's unreal, right? Is she the GOAT? What do you think? Is she the greatest of all time? she's pretty darn good that's for sure <laughs> she's a four-time olympic champion yeah it's unreal <laughs> unreal and they had a pair of them they had two people yeah. doing on pace to do that how about that 
together. Yep. The Japanese have a lot of sisters. Compu- yeah, they, they do. You know what I mean? It's just like Helen, Helen wasn't having it though, right? <laughs> Helen wasn't having it. She went a little bit of a spoiler. Um, let's, I want to, you know, like, so I'm looking, I was looking at my shirt and I was looking at the BA. And, you barbarian know, apparel. Barbarian Apparel. How great is that guy? I know that you worked with Steve Farrell at Iron Sharpens Iron. He's a great guy. Um, He's awesome. Steve. I tell you what, Steve's not so good to text and and not and, and and type to, but to speak to Steve, and and be in his presence, and he's a really nice guy. You know what I mean? Like, but he he comes off real weird on texts and all that, and and on. You know, what I'm, you understand what I'm saying or not? <laughs> I just think it's funny you're saying it. I think Steve's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, but like to talk to Steve and hang out with Steve and listen to him talk, he's a good dude. And, and he is. He tells you something, he's going to honor whatever he tells you. I like that guy. So him at Iron, Iron Sharpens Iron, and then, you know, Josh Sassfee, Barbarian Apparel, he introduced me to you and gave me your shirt that I'm wearing. Is, yeah. there a better, is there a better person to work with in the apparel company? No, definitely not. I love Barbarian Apparel. He's been super supportive of me. Um, so myself and Tyler Graff were his, like, original two sponsored athletes. Um, and he has been phenomenal. You know, he, I'll just get a, a care package from Barbarian Apparel. I'm like, what? I didn't even know. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything was coming. And he's like, yeah, you know, or he'll send me something and be like, hey, what do you think of this? I sent you one in the mail. And I'm like, oh, you're awesome. Thank you. So I, you know, I don't even ask for things. He sends them to me and it's always perfect timing. He always sends me singlets. Um, every competition I have, I get the, you know, latest and greatest new um, singlet. And, you know, he, one time I asked him, I said, hey, can I get a weigh-in singlet? And he was like, what, what, everyone just uses a lighter thing. I was like, no, on, honestly, there's a way, like some singlets are lighter than others. You know, can you make a weigh-in singlet? And so he, he made me a weigh-in singlet and you know, it helped and it was awesome. And actually three or four of my teammates were like, Hey, can we borrow that singlet? And so we're like passing around the believe in the weave singlet um, <laughs> yeah, over here. And at first, at first, Josh kind of teased me a little bit about, he's like, what do you need a weigh-in singlet for? You know, just, it's only point that, you know, point two difference. And I'm like, Hey, that makes a difference sometimes. Um, but, but yeah, so Josh, he's, man, he's phenomenal. He really takes care of his athletes. He's a great person to work for, work with, not to mention his clothing is so soft and so comfy. Oh God, I love it. He wears yeah. things like, uh, like an American apparel type shirt. Oh, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I love it too. And not only because like, you know, of course I love that people are repping my shirts, but they're like, Lauren, I wear your shirt all the time. And they're like, you know, we, we love you and everything like that, but not just to rep you, but because it's the most comfy shirt I own. And I'm like, oh, thanks guys. <laughs> so yeah, I, I love that too. Okay. So I know you got to get going here soon. So I guess I'll part with this. What can we do? Be, what can I do? What can you do? What can we do as a community? What can we do to be better at helping promote women's wrestling and have equality, treat people with respect? right? What can we do to be better to forge the sport ahead for all? Um, you know, first of all, by, you know, supporting women's wrestling, wrestling is wrestling, right? You know, um, you know, when you competed, you did the same things that I'm going through. I'm going through the same things that you went through. So having that, that love and that respect for your other wrestlers, you know, women wrestlers, we want to be treated just the same. You know, you, you look at any of the high school girls and they want to go through the same things the boys are going through. I know at some of the iron sharpens iron camps, we would have specific um, girls breakaways, if you will. And the girls wanted to be doing what the boys were doing, you know, because they just, they want to be treated the same, you know, um, the equality and pay, you know, we, we just want to be viewed as equal. We want to view, be viewed as the same. And, you know, the other side of it is we need to work to get there. We don't just want it given to us. We want to work to get there, but showing love and respect as we grow the sport, as we, we're not there yet, um, but as we get there, and I, I think we talked about this before, but exposure is free. You know, social media exposure is free. So anything that we can post um, online um, as far as to get women exposure, media exposure, and things like that to grow the sport, that that's all free. You know, that's not costing anybody anything. Um, and just being kind and supportive of 
those around us in the sport, the, the women that are chasing their dreams too, you know, um, we're us women, we're all doing the same things that the men are doing in order to accomplish our dreams. So how do we get a hold of Lauren Louise? If we want a camp, a clinic, uh, if we want to reach out and tell you that you're a hero at autograph our shirts, whatever it may be, meet you, find out where you're training, see if we can come train me, whatever it may be. How do we reach out to Lauren Louise to get her for a camp, a clinic or whatever it may be? Yes. Awesome. I would love that. Yeah. Definitely reach out to me guys. I'm on Facebook at Lauren Louise. Um, it's a picture of me wrestling Hawkeye, Tom, uh, Tom Brands and Mike Durow yelling at me at the Olympic trials. So that's my picture, but um, Lauren Louise on Facebook, Instagram, um, believe in Louise. So believe I N and then my last name, Louise, L O U I V E. My email is L L O three. Uh, uh, sorry, L L O U I V E. So my last name, O three at Gmail. So any of those contacts, um, feel free to message me, um, DM me. Yeah. Just go ahead, get a hold of me any way that you can. And yeah, let me know questions, comments, camps, anything. Awesome, Lauren. What do you got going on tonight? Anything good? Yeah. Um, I actually have a massage today. Woo. Taking care of that body recovery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So, you look like you're ready to go, man. You look like you're ready to scrap. I like it. I'm not going to mess with you. And you know what? Now I know that you ride horses and shoot guns. <laughs> tell me, quick, quick, quick thing. I know. Tell me where you were riding, galloping on a horse, and shooting targets with a gun. Where, where were you? Oh, I was in Worcester, Ohio at my parents' house. <laughs> so your mom and dad live over by Worcester, huh? Yeah, they, yeah, they live in North Lawrence. Uh, that'd be like Tuslaw area. But uh, we shoot guns in Worcester. Right there. Literally yeah. just there. Did you, you I got to send you this uh, link to this. Uh, there's a doctor's house right next to Tusla High School that's on the market. You should see this house for like $900,000. I think I know exactly what you're talking about. That's oh. really close to my parents' farm. <laughs> Dude, mind blowing. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like some doctor's house that got in trouble or something. <laughs> it's crazy. And it's right out where you live. Right out where yep. your parents live. And you were galloping on a horse shooting tart. I, yeah, I, you were shooting. I don't know how the horse didn't fuck. And <laughs> it's mounted. It's mounted shooting. My horse is awesome. So it's, it's mounted shooting. We shoot balloons uh, with blanks and fastest time wins. You got to hit all 10 balloons. You get two forty fives you're shooting with and you get a gun switch in there. So it's, it's pretty awesome. It's a good time. <laughs> I saw it. I was like, it was crazy. All right. Um, okay. Well, Hopefully we can stay in contact and do this again sometime. And hopefully we're talking Tokyo 2021. Uh, it would be next year around this time. We'll know if you're going or not. Right. That's right. We'll know. We'll know this time next year. Awesome. Lauren. Well, you got anything else for me? No, you're awesome. Zeb. Thank you so much for having me on today. Awesome. Um, all right. We'll get to your massage. Hang out a little, little bit here. Let me stop, uh, cut this video and we'll talk off camera a little bit. All right. Sounds great. All right, Lauren. Thank you.